question as a journalist. You are bringing information out on these two people. One that has a record, uh, Steve Wells doesn't have a record, and he professes to support ABC. Mm -hmm. Have you, as a journalist, approached him and asked him the question, why, if he professes to support whether it be the second uh, amendment or any other uh, plan that he's mm -hmm. okay. running on, uh, no, I get how, he, how he turns around and supports the guy that actually brought about the second act, uh, the, uh, the same act. Uh, so let me start with, I'm going to answer that. Let me start with first. Never take anything I say as absolute. Question me. Always ask me where my sources come from. Check everything for yourself. Verify it for yourself. Which I read, which is what I do for every source that I read every day on all this. I don't feel bad when people say, I'm not sure if you're right, Mike. Great, find out for yourself. Best way to find out. But I have done a lot of work on research on all of the candidates. All of them, so if you have a question about any of them, I can answer it. For Mr. Wells, his answer is uh, in regard to specifically the Second Amendment, because I've tried to ask him that question. Uh, he has refused. In fact, for the 99... Is the answer you mean? In, no, no. For 99 days, I have sent him, not every day, but I have sent him repeated requests for an interview. He's been in the race for 99 days. Throughout that time period, I've been sending him requests by email, by phone call, to try and have an interview. He has refused to acknowledge any of those calls or that like, contact. He refuses to answer the question. What he has said uh, in one radio interview, excuse me, two, two radio interviews, his donations to Governor Cuomo were not to support Governor Cuomo. They were, in fact, donations by his brother, in his name, under the business, uh, to make business happen. That it requires, you literally have to pay the politicians in power to be able to do business in New York State. And that's what that payment was for. $10,000, April, uh, April of 2015, and they were to just make sure that he could do business in New York State and that he wasn't actually supporting Mr. Cuomo. I don't know if that's a better answer or not, but that was his answer. You can check WIVX, WUTQ, uh, and WNBF have all done, asked them that question, that's the answer he's given three times. Well, that's pretty much what the answer is from Trump. When they say, why did you donate to Obama or to whomever, he says it's a business thing. Right, and I... I can give you my personal thought on that. My personal thought on that is, it's a crock. That's a lie. It is a way to make it sound really appealing. It's a 30 second answer to a much larger question. What we're, what we're saying is, well, the system is corrupt, it's broken. We all know it's corrupt and it's broken. And I'm going to pay to continue that corruption and broken nature of that government because that's the easiest thing to do. And I'm just going to let it go. Why should I have any belief that, you, that anyone who professes that is going to do anything better going forward? I don't care if that's the president or Mr. Trump, I don't care if it's Mr. Wells or anyone else. If you are contributing to a system that we acknowledge is broken and is corrupt, especially New York State, is corrupt. The governor's under investigation again for the third time on corruption. How Dean, um, Sheldon Silvers was just convicted, excuse me, not just convicted, but just sentenced to 12 years in prison, which at his age is a life prison sentence. And he's going away for his corruption. Dean Skelos is about to get his sentencing for his corruption. New York is fundamentally corrupt. 
and we are paying into that system to make it bigger and better and more efficient. And that is somehow a reason why, well, you're a good guy. You're going to do a great job in government. Why? Why would, I can't see, I don't understand that answer, how that makes me feel better about someone getting an elected office. That's my person. You may disagree, you may agree with them. And that's fine, but that's what this is about. Let's have that discussion. And I'd like to have that discussion with Mr. Wells and have him clearly explain to me, not in 30 seconds, but clearly explain to me how donating and supporting, which is basically advocating for someone who is advocating the exact opposite of what he believes and reinforcing that person's ability to continue to strip away rights, I need to find out. Please explain to me how I'm, that's not what I'm connecting. Tell me how that's not correct because I don't see any way that it's not. You gave him $10,000, that makes him more able to continue to, the corruption that's in New York State and taking away our rights. Please explain to me how that isn't the case. He hasn't answered me. He won't, it appears he doesn't want to answer that question. But I'll keep trying. And again, that's my view on it. Others may have a different view. Another question. That's what they did with the mafia. The mafia, yeah, yeah, it is. In a way, it is very much like the mafia. You know, you got to pay the protection money. If you don't pay me the protection, you know, that's a great example. I'm going to use that in future when I talk to other people. It is exactly the same thing. You will pay me to keep your business going. Otherwise, we're going to do something to your business and it's going to collapse. That is the mafia way. And gee, isn't New York State exactly the same thing? No, no, you've got to pay into the system to make sure the system keeps going. Otherwise, we're going to close out the business. Okay, if you want discussion, I don't disagree with you. Okay. Uh, when it comes to what I, I think is right and wrong. Yes. However, I have had a business. Yes. I have family in business. And I can understand their side. You can probably fight that corruption better if you're in the system with it in one of the positions and you can on the outside being in business and if that's the only way that you can continue your business that's your livelihood and so on i understand that position and in case you didn't hear so if you get to be in the system the best way to fight the system is to be in it and help change it right and i understand that logic and there is that logic i disagree with when it comes to elected office i disagree because the power to change government doesn't lie with the politicians. Ray, uh, President Reagan said very famously, you know, the most terrifying things you could ever hear is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Being in the government system does not mean that you're going to remove any of the problems. Matter of fact, I would say we have the proof of that in the government we have, which uh, the re-election rate for Congress, by the way, I know, I know a lot of people don't know this. Uh, the Rio, according to OpenSecrets.com, and they're an independent group, they just get data on all politicians, especially in Congress. Since 2000, from 2000 to 2014, the re-election rate for a member of the House of Representatives, 93.75%, called 94%. The re-election rate for a member of the Senate, from 2000 to 2014, 85%. In total, if you are elected to Congress, you have an 89.4% chance of being re-elected. In other words, and it's been worked out before, you are almost more likely to die in office or be convicted of a crime than be elected out of office. That is institutional corruption to me. To me, that is a consistent, <clears throat> systematic corruption that is so intrinsic, it doesn't want to change. And part of the way it doesn't want to change is look at who you're putting in. It always comes back to the public. If we're not involved in selecting who is being on that primary ballot, and if we're not involved in going to the election and electing the right people, then what's happening is other people are making that decision for us. 
which we normally call the establishment, which is kind of amorphous, but it's really not. It's that 1% who are making all the donations. That's the establishment. They're in both parties, and they're, sometimes they're in no party, but they're the, they're the establishment. And they're going out there and they're picking people because they're putting all their money behind it. And occasionally we get some people in, and we can do that now in these races. We have other people who are out there, but they're throwing all the money out there saying, here's your 30 seconds, 30 seconds. You don't need to know more than that, just that 30 seconds. And we elect that person with that 30 seconds who is picked by the elite, by those leadership, that establishment, to make sure that the system doesn't change. So that's why I don't agree. And, and, and I understand, and don't listen, I understand and I respect the thought behind it, but I'm looking at the practicality of it. And while the thought is, I get inside the system and I make a change because I'm a good person, even, even though I was doing something that may be question. I believe that the only people who get in, that may be their excuse, and that's the way they excuse what they've done, but I believe that the system has selected that person. That's what, and the easiest way is, look at who's backing them. <clears throat> if that same person who paid to get the business done, and I own a business too, so I understand, if, but if that candidate is being backed by the state GOP, if that candidate is being supported by other members of Congress who agree with that system, if we're seeing that other members of the establishment are backing that individual, how likely is that individual being the rogue who's going to try and break the system there that, that is supporting him or her? Unlikely. Now, Steve Wells may or may not be that candidate. And I'll leave it up to you to double check for yourself on that. I, I know what my research has shown but I don't want to prejudice it more than what I already have on my opinion. But that's where I believe. And there's the proof. For me, that's the proof is, I want to break the system. I had to do it because I was a businessman. I want to break it by getting in. Okay, who's supporting the very people you're talking about breaking up? I don't believe you. I don't believe you because the same people who live off that system are the people who are paying for you to get in. I don't think you're being honest. That's my opinion. But once other people look into it, if we can get these candidates to talk, and if we can get people to vote, they will talk. I guarantee you. I see it with, I do podcasts, I do articles, I do interviews with these candidates. I guarantee you, if I had 10,000 people show up and click on one of my articles tomorrow about a certain candidate, whichever candidate it is, that candidate is going to call me within an hour and say, Mike, can I do another interview? Why? Because 10,000 10, people just showed up out of nowhere and said, we, we're paying attention. Guaranteed. They pay attention to it. They read every article and they listen to every podcast I do. They look at how many people are paying attention to it. They look at the YouTube videos that I do. And they ask, whoa, who's paying attention? I guarantee you, they will pay attention. Yeah? Another question. Uh, a lot of times when there is a political challenge, the leader usually will try to avert any uh, debate with someone who may not be uh, in a position to win. Since the feedback seems to be that Tammy is the pretty much the leader and the, and the individual that probably, at, the, at this juncture anyway, will win the primary. Is she, has she made any effort, or will she make any effort to actually debate an individual like uh, Steve? Good or question. is she gonna avoid because she is pretty much uh, the uh, result of uh, she's the front. She's the front. At the moment, a lot of people will consider uh, Claudia Tenney as the front. She ran in 2014. She lost by 2,000 votes. She's known throughout the district as the highest name recognition of any of the candidates. So she's the presumptive leader. Uh, 
Actually, in November, Claudia Tenney decided that she was going to run for Congress before anyone, including uh, Representative Richard Hanna, who currently holds the seat and will retire at the end of the year, before he even made his decision, she was already in the race. That was November 19th. In December, <coughs> Representative Hanna said he was out. Before he got out of the race, uh, I believe it was November 28th, Claudia Tenney asked for a debate with Richard Hanna. His response was, he got out the race. He got out of the office, he retired. In January, actually on December 22nd, without notifying anyone, George Phillips jumped into the race. He put up a website and he went out and he got donations from a couple hundred people. Got $100,000 very quietly without telling the public that he was in the race. I embarrassed him and told everyone about the fact that he was in the race on December 30th. And then on January 4th, he had his announcement and told everyone. It was approximately January 18th, I believe, Claudia Tenney said that she wanted to have a debate. Mr. Phillips at that time said, we'll see what happens, but there's plenty of time. Uh, I believe in February he said, well, maybe we'll do a debate. Fast forward to last week, and suddenly Steve Wells said, to one news organization, which he speaks to ex pretty much exclusively, and said to them, I want to have a debate, I want to have eight debates with all the candidates, uh, all the Republicans. And then, of course, the others who had already said yes, said sure. But now it's Mr. Wells' idea, because the news organization he's speaking to actually wasn't around paying attention to the race in November, December, January, or at any point in the time where I have. Uh, at this moment, I have the leading number of articles on the race. I've done 25 articles on the race, uh, and I like to believe they're more in-depth than anyone else. So that's why. But she did say yes, and she said yes again to this latest offer. But and it I doesn't know, behoove her at this point to pursue that since Technically, she, if she, she only technically, right? technically, if she were going about this the way that a lot of other candidates do, the best answer would be if she did what Richard Hanna did in 2014. 2014, Mr. Hanna said, "No, I'm not doing any debates," and he won because no one get to hear it. And it would be smart as a front runner say nothing because she'll probably win. But instead, she has said yes. She has always said. And so they are. So she's open to a debate, in other words. Yeah, there's going to be at least two, possibly three. League of Women Voters, uh, one or two radio stations. I tried to put one together, got shot down. So there's going to be at least two, possibly three. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone. There's always information out there where you can always make this better. It just takes all of us working together. We're going to do it. We're going to make a difference. No matter who we pick, no matter who we individually want, when we do it all together, it always works out for the best for our nation. I always believe that.